First, all processes take place in matrices. How does it transpire? The matrix is simply an empty set of possibilities. Empty in what sense? The fact that in itself a matrix is not filled with anything except for these very possibilities that are not material. And in order for something to appear, the matrix begins to fill with matter. Well, first from its finest varieties and then ends with a gross substance. This is one side of the question. The second side of the question is related to egregors. Egregor, in general, is a field structure that carries some algorithms, some information. People interact with it. But in order to govern something, you need to know where and how. That is, you need a certain matrix in which the process will proceed either univariate or multivariate. And then, when the matrix is defined exactly as a multitude of possibilities, including the paths of transition from one stage to another, then we need to load the algorithms into the egregor, and the egregor will implement these algorithms on its own, in general, practically without our direct participation. Well, the objective basis is the matrix itself. The matrix exists as such. It is an objective given. And then the question arises of constructing a subjective blueprint from this very matrix. And this question on the construction of this subjective blueprint is directly related to distinction, which in the Quran is called criterion. Because if nerviousness is such that something will not be given in the distinction, then something in this subjective matrix of possibilities, in the blueprint of the subjective matrix, is insufficient. And the situation will either appear inescapable, although objectively there are ways out of it, or some highest level of governance quality could not be achieved. Therefore, in general, everything in life is connected with distinction, and not only the issues of matrix egregorial governance. Everything that concerns the identification of metrological consistency is always subjective. During the time of the political economy of Marxism, for example, probably millions, if not tens and hundreds of millions of people were not able to perceive the metrological inadequacy of this political economy. Stalin pointed this out directly. And the issues of subjectivity, in this case, they are twofold. Well, firstly, distinction, and secondly, a person must understand what metrological consistency is and its absence. And if he understands this matter, then in contact with any theory, with any view, the first question is, is what is being offered metrologically consistent or not? Metrologically consistent, what is this? This could be either an instrument base or organoleptic, that is, the basis of one's own feelings. But nevertheless, if a certain phenomenon is characterized by a certain set of signs, then metrological consistency is expressed in the fact that this phenomenon is present. Then by this set of signs, it can be identified. Well, how to direct? If the matrix is the way it is, and for some reason it does not suit you, then the energy flows that are carried somewhere in the wrong direction must be either redirected or merged. 
If the matrix is devoid of energy, then it will not work. Take for example a battery. It runs out, you throw it away. So with matrices. While there will be no new energy, there will be nothing. How is it possible? In general, the example is well known. From childhood, we all remember the plot of the tale of Sleeping Beauty. What happens there? In this tale, a girl is born, a ball is held in the palace, everyone gathers, including various kinds of fairies, among them the Spring Fairy and Karabos. The Spring Fairy knows that old Karabos has a nasty character. She will try to spoil both the occasion and life in general. Therefore, she moves aside and she is not visible. Old Karabos appears and lays a curse on the girl, saying that when she turns 16 years old, she will be pricked by a spindle, die, and that's it. The old woman put all her energy into this. At this time, the Spring Fairy emerges and says, yes, she will prick herself, but she will not die, but will fall asleep, and after a hundred years, a prince will wake her and they will live happily ever after. This is about how to modify unacceptable matrices. And the old woman, having limited energy reserves and having invested everything in her story, she can't do anything. Therefore, in general, the issue of the last word in the discussion plays an important role in all cultures. Because if the discussion somehow or in some way still influences matrix egregorial processes, then the last word is like a switchman, where he directs, there it will go. Yes, this is at the dialogue level too, and at the level of monologues. Not necessarily allowed, in some cases, simply mental monologues. It all depends on the specifics of the situation. Because in one situation, thought may be enough. And in the other situation, it may be necessary to deploy an informational campaign in society. This is depending on the circumstances. That is, Negative matrices with poor content, they can be such that if you announce it now, then many people will pump it up energetically and it will be realized. If you remain silent, they will not be in the know and it can quietly, calmly fade, rebuild somehow. That is, trouble can be called out. This again depends on the specifics of the situation. In some cases, trouble can be created out of nothing. Well, here is a real case from Russian history. It is the 19th century, in one of the northern provinces. There is an old woman soothsayer. She has a vision. There will be hunger. She poses this matter before the people. The men are clever. Old mother is in authority. Spring approaches. No one is sowing. So for what? There will be hunger, and so crop failure, famine. So summer comes. It is wonderful. All the surrounding provinces yield an incredible crop, and here, there is hunger. What happened? If we consider this process as a matrix, then the soothsayer saw the result. There will be hunger. She announced her vision, but she was not interested in the background of the question. If she had inquired about the background of the question, why will there be hunger? Then she would unwind the chain in the matrix and come to her beloved self. That if you want hunger, you should say, there will be hunger. If you do not want hunger, then you must remain silent and there will be a wonderful harvest and there will be no hunger. Well, this is an example of the fact 
that from scratch the soothsayer brought trouble. It depends on the subject and on the situation in which everything happens. Also depending on the circumstances, because, well, if I am not mistaken, the aircraft designer Yakovlev gives such an example in his memoirs. In the 20s or 30s, the topic of light engine aviation, one of the designers made a plane from paper lining. Well, they displayed it at an aviation show. It said, a plane with paper lining. The question is, what do the audience do? That's right, they poke it with their fingers. That's right, they poke and prod at it with their fingers. The situation with matrixes is exactly the same. Now, if a matrix is barely stable and any breath of a breeze, any ill will towards it is able to bring down the process, then you must be silent or talk about it only to those who are interested in ensuring that this process reaches a good positive result. If the situation is such that there are actually quite a lot of people in society who can support this process, then you must announce it. It all depends on the situation. This again depends on the specifics of the situation, because there may be processes where the number of people plays a role, but there may be processes where the number of people does not play a role. Well, in everything that relates to matrices, it is always a question to think first of all about to whom to say what and for what purpose. In different ways, because in relation to any egregor, a person can be in different egregorial statuses. The egregorial status can be associated with psyche types, with the information and algorithms that a person personally carries on his own. And then it turns out that if a human psychotype is achieved, then a person can, in principle, enter any egregor as an operator and modify its algorithms as he sees fit. If the human psychotype has not been achieved, then the egregor-man relationship begins. He can enter into some kind of egregorial system, just like a source of energy. He can enter as an executive periphery, he can enter as an egregorial leader, to which the algorithms of the egregor are subordinate. He can enter as a programmer, that is, he can also operate. But it all depends on which egregor and who specifically wants to. Well, because history also flows in a certain matrix. What is being implemented are certain developmental algorithms which are expressed in general in the chronology of history. Therefore, the second priority is called matrix algorithmic, or as it was originally called, chronological. Well, due to the fact that the vast majority of people are not able to maintain their mood in the state that is necessary in order to govern an egregor. In general, all the secrets of life are related to whether a person is able to create the right mood for the type of activity that he is going to engage in. If he can, then he will successfully solve problems. If not, then the attempt to solve problems will be accompanied by various associated effects up to the collapse of governance and the emergence, well, 
of side effects that will devalue even the achieved result. In general, everything that exists in the world exists as a trinity of matrix, information and matter which fills it all. The film The Matrix, by the way, is Hollywood's answer to the concept of the tri-unity of matter, information, measure.